What low recoil pistol cartridges to use for hog hunting? William Hovey Smith, 2021. Like many older hunters, I am starting to have hand and wrist problems and need to avoid hard recoiling handguns. This is Hovey Smith, the backyard sportsman. And what I have arrayed before me are two Ruger revolvers in a high point carbine all intended as hog killing weapons. Well, we do have hogs here in central Georgia. It is now in the middle of our very long deer season, which will not expire until January the 15th. But right now I'm sort of reviewing my hog weapons because I will be doing some night hunting for hogs. In Georgia, you may not hunt hogs at night until deer season is closed. And so, we have several things previously prepared. One of which is this 10 millimeter Ruger Super Red Hawk revolver. Now this is loaded with double taps cast bullets and as you see here in a ring in a clip these are reputed to be 200 grain cast bullets at 1300 feet per second from a 5 inch barrel well uh, the Ruger's barrel is a little longer than 5 inches it's between 5 and 6 so a little bit of advantage there and the reason the hard cast bullets are recommended, particularly for hogs, is that they provide deep penetration. And you need to get through the gristle plate of a hog into the lungs of a boar and out the other side and hopefully break shoulder bones along both ways. Hmm. So that's quite a task, this little bullet. Now we have a scope, a variable pistol scope on this, which is a Thompson Center branded scope. On our Ruger Old Army, we have removed the scope here, but we have a new green dot sight, which also has a flashlight on it. So this is very useful for night hunting. When you turn it on, you can flip the light on, as you may see now, and you may not be able to see, it's also projecting a green dot. You can turn it so you see the green dot only. Hmm. Now supposedly this is visible at 100 yards in daylight and at 300 yards at night. Well, we shall see. And you do have adjustment features to enable you to adjust the green dot so the gun will shoot to the point of aim. So now we turn everything back off. And so far as the load is concerned, we are similarly shooting cast bullets in the 45 long colt and this is a 255 grain bullet by Kato Ajama and this is hard cast metal and it's getting out there about 913 feet per second comparatively slow when you're speaking of the 10 millimeter but an effective cartridge now this has killed deer uh, it got one last Thanksgiving with a spine shot and also on a follow-up shot completely penetrated through the lungs of a smallish buck. I have previous videos where the old army took a deer with its percussion cylinder on Ossabaw Island and another with the cartridge cylinder on Thanksgiving Day. Not a tiny one, but smallish. Uh, we do get 200 pound deer in Georgia, but they are pretty, pretty few in fur. Okay. On the carbine, we have the 10 millimeter. And we also have it loaded with 180 grain hollow point bullets. Out of this gun, this is putting out at about 
oh, something like 1,500 feet per second. So it's really skipping out there. Well, the problem with the hollow point projectiles, uh, yes, it's going at a faster velocity, but it also means it will expand very quickly on hitting flesh and particularly bone on a hollow. So this is useful for brain shots. It's useful not so much for spine shots because the spine on a, ho on a hog is so deep in the neck. And if you're talking about a big hog, the spine is actually in the bottom one quarter of the neck, not the top. So you may have to shoot through that much flesh, meaning nearly a foot on a 600 pound hog, before you ever get bone, unless you hit him in the back of the head, which will work, by the way. So, unfortunately, the carbine does not feed these cast bullets very reliably. I can load it for a first shot, the most significant one, with the cast bullets and it will fire and eject properly. But it does not like to load them from the magazine. So that's where we are currently. Which do you get greater penetration on? The 10 millimeter cast? The 45 long coat cast? Well that we're going to test tomorrow on some sandboxes. And we'll see how things work out. It's interesting that with this same bullet, although cast out of soft lead so I can load it in a cylinder, we'll, we'll reach 1,039 feet per second out of this revolver in the percussion cylinder right here. But unfortunately, uh, you have to load softer lead, which reduces your penetration. So, in all of this bullet making and shooting business, yeah, there are trade-offs. You want to ensure deep penetration, get through that bone, and get into those lungs and hearts? Or, if you're shooting at a smaller animal, can you stand with uh, surface penetration, which will still have enough power to drive completely through it? On small animals, yeah, the hollow points will, and they will kill very effectively. But when you start talking about bigger stuff, well, the hard cast bullets seem to do best. At least when we are talking about cartridges like the 45 long Colt and the 10 millimeter. If you're talking about high power stuff, then that's a different story. I'm an author, mostly of outdoor books, but I do have some significant business titles. And I depend on the sale of these books to support this channel. My newest business book is Make Your Own Job Anytime, Anywhere, at Any Age. In this book, I teach individual entrepreneurship and how to discover your own individual business ideas for use to start your own businesses throughout life. In my novel, Until Death Do You Part, An American Family Meets Her Sicilian Cousins, a family takes a trip to Sicily. And when they arrive on Monday, they are informed that their two sons are to marry two women they've never even heard of on Friday, or none will leave the island alive. Our first test is going to be penetration with cast bullets. And we're going to shoot a 9mm Luger out of a Ruger Max 9, and then the 10mm out of our Super Red Hawk, and then the 45 long Colt out of our old army. First, our 9mm, the truncated cone cast bullet. Then our 10mm auto. And then our 45 long Colt. Oh, one can judge a little something from energies by the relative movements of the blocks and the sand backwards. Mm 
Okay, let's see what happened. Nine millimeter penetrated. Ten millimeter penetrated. Forty five penetrated. There was a paper barrier here at approximately four and a half to five inches. Okay. Paper barrier is penetrated. All right. We find a lead bullet at seven and a quarter inches. With a 10 millimeter, the paper barrier was penetrating. And we find the lead bullet right there, 10 inches. So considerably more powerful. With the 45, we had more movement of the box. The paper was penetrated. And we find a lead bullet at about a nine and a half inches. and no indication that it actually struck the wood. To recap, the nine millimeter penetrated seven and a quarter inches, the 10 millimeter, 10 inches, and the 45 long coat, nine and a half inches. Reversing the boxes, we have the 180 grain jacketed hollow point out of the 10 millimeter. And then we will use the carbine to shoot exactly the same round. Well, that moved the box back actually uh, more or less the same. A quarter inch difference there. Both penetrated. And that from the carbine seems to show a little larger hole. Neither of which cut through the cardboard. And here is the bullet from the carbine, expanded to, oh, slightly over an inch in diameter, I'd say. And here is the bullet from the handgun. And you can see the marked difference between them. So these jacketed hollow pointed bullets would just not penetrate near as far as the cast bullets do. And that's the reason it would perform very poorly on game, I think. I've activated the green dot sight and we're going to see where the gun shoots.
first task is to find the target. You can see the green dot on the grass. I cannot focus it on the target at 50 yards. Hmm. Just cannot see it. I move the target to about 25 yards. At 25 yards, I can see it distinctly. Well, let's go see how we did. I was aiming here, and so we we're striking low about. There's seven inches, I'd say. The LF-58 was just not suitable for this application. In daylight use, it took too long to get the dot on target. And when I adjusted the green dot, it moved out of the circle of illumination. Combined with a scope, I think it would have done better. The 10mm auto cartridge with hard cast bullets had slightly more penetration than the 45 long Colt. But the long coat apparently struck with more muzzle energy. And I have confidence in it for hogs weighing in the range of 200 pounds or so. I am not impressed with a 9mm as a hog hunting round. Yes, it can sometimes work on small hogs weighing in at about 100 pounds, but I like the added insurance of having more power when I might be taking on a larger animal. As with all shooting, accurate shot placement is the key to success. This is not always possible when shooting at a drove of rapidly moving animals. To support this channel, buy my books. Order now for Christmas delivery. For more information on my books, blogs, and nearly 900 videos, go to my website, hoviesmith.com. For more information on my business books, go to makeyourownjobsecurity.com. To find out how my novel, screenplay, and movie project is coming along, go to fatherthegrooms.net. The first review of my novel, Until Death Do You Part, describes the book as a gastronomic romantic adventure story taking the reader through the American Southwest, Louisiana, and Sicily. You may see the review at fatherthegrooms.net. Hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Goodbye and God bless.